What country do you think has had the fastest growing stock market in the world over the last 12 months? Is it the United States? Well, that's a good guess as the stock market has seen gains of more than 50% in the last 12 months, which is a whopping 41% more than any normal year. How about China? Well, the Shanghai Composite Index has done well, growing by over 25% in the last 12 months, which is about 20% higher than its normal year. Or how about about Japan. Well, they've seen their stock market grow by about 50% over the last 12 months as well, which is about 45% higher than normal. Yet, despite all of these countries having record amounts of growth in their own stock exchanges, they all pale in comparison to that of Zimbabwe. You see, if you had invested in the Zimbabwe Industrial Index 12 months ago, you would have seen a return of an astounding 481%. So as you can see, Zimbabwe's stock market has been crushing the competition around the world. Yet the reasons for this might be a lot different than you think, and maybe this might signal that something very disturbing is happening to stock markets all around the world right in front of our very eyes. Just over a decade ago, Zimbabwe was going through one of the worst episodes of hyperinflation in history. This was when they had a peak inflation rate of 89.7 sextillion percent per year. And that was just a smidge high to say the very least. As the normal inflation rates for the Western world range between 1% and let's say 5%. But anyways, the country adopted new currency standards by 2009, and soon after Zimbabwe actually had a fairly fast growing economy. And actually, for the next four years, Zimbabwe averaged a 15% GDP growth per year, which was then followed by a much slower but steady growth rate of about 3% per year up until 2018. But then, in 2019, Zimbabwe entered a recession after a drought and an ensuing famine hit the country, and that was followed by the government attempting to reform its currency once again. And so, the country was in an economic panic. That was when it decided to use a tactic that it thought would help keep asset prices afloat and prevent the complete economic collapse of the country. You see, it decided to print more money. In fact, by January of 2020, 70% of Zimbabwe's dollars had been created within the previous 12 months alone. This injection of currency did help keep Zimbabwe's markets afloat, but what it really did was devalue the currency itself. Just a few months later, the pandemic hit. This forced Zimbabwe to create even more currency to prevent the collapse of its economy, and as of today, more than 93% of all dollars in Zimbabwe were created within the last 24 months. And so, all of this money printing really just devalued the currency in Zimbabwe, which artificially sent prices of everything insanely high. So in fact, the reason why Zimbabwe's stock market has skyrocketed in the last year has not been because the companies or the economy in Zimbabwe have been doing well, it is actually because the government chose to artificially devalue its own currency in order to prevent a market collapse. So in a sense, the gains seen in Zimbabwe's stock market are really just from increasing its own money supply. And you know what? I wonder where they got that idea from. Now it's October 19th, 1987. Wall Street is seeing the stock market crash at a level not seen since the first days of the Great Depression. The market drops 20% in one single day, and the population becomes worried that this could be the start of the new Great Depression. But Alan Greenspan, who was the head of the Federal Reserve, had an idea. Instead of letting the banks fail and investors lose all of their money, he decided to indirectly bail out some of these banks by injecting liquidity and currency into the markets. This extremely important event in history, which most people have not heard of, was called the Greenspan Put. Essentially, for the first time, what he did was bail out the banks and provide investor confidence by increasing the money supply in the markets. Does any of this sound familiar to you? Now, in 1987, this ended up stopping the panic on Wall Street, and even though it would take two years before the stock market fully recovered from this single day, an economic collapse did not happen, and the banks did not fail. 
But unknowingly, what this also did was signal to the banks and the population that any sort of downturn in the markets or the economy was a bad thing that the Federal Reserve would try to avoid, and it also signaled that the Federal Reserve and the government only want to see perpetual growth forever. So over the next decade, banks started taking more risks, investors started using margin a lot more, and many average everyday people began investing in the stock market. Now fast forward to 2008, the financial markets are collapsing after decades of financial institutions realizing that they were too big to fail, and that the Federal Reserve would bail them out with their currency printing practices if anything went wrong. And well, as we know, things went wrong. So Ben Bernanke in 2008, who was the new head of the Federal Reserve, decided to inject a temporary, unprecedented amount of money into the markets in order to prevent a full-on economic meltdown, as well as setting interest rates temporarily to zero. And to a certain degree, this strategy worked. The economy was saved, the temporary Federal Reserve stimulus went away, and interest rates returned to a normal level of about 6 to 8%. Except none of that happened. You see, what people forget is that years after the Federal Reserve conducted their stimulus actions in 2008, they attempted to stop printing money. What happened is that the stock market in 2010 immediately collapsed by 11% just days after those actions were taken. And instead of going through a market collapse, because you know, we aren't allowed to have those, the Federal Reserve decided to just keep printing money. And it was at this point that the government and Federal Reserve realized that the markets had become so over leveraged from decades of Alan Greenspan's intervention in 1987 that they did not have the capacity to fund the US government spending without asset prices collapsing. And so instead of letting asset prices take a dip, they just kept printing money and indirectly devalued the US dollar. And they did this for another eight years up until 2018. That was when Jerome Powell, the new head of the Federal Reserve, decided that enough was enough and that we needed to shut off the money hose and raise interest rates for the first time since 2007. And that is what he did. And as many of you may have guessed, the markets collapsed immediately. In the three months following Jerome Powell's decision, the S&P 500 fell by 17%. It was at this point where myself, along with many others, realized that not only were we in a bubble, but all of the markets and economies were built upon low interest rates and overprinting currency. And this was proven by the fact that any slight push towards fiscal responsibility would result in a market collapse. Oh wait, but I forgot, we aren't allowed to have market collapses. So in 2019, Jerome Powell made the decision to start printing more money again. And by the end of 2019, valuations for companies were at levels not seen since the tech bubble and the roaring 20s, which, you know, was the party that never ended. And then comes 2020. The pandemic hits, markets temporarily collapse, and more money is printed. Fast forward to today, and we have officially been in the longest bull market in history. Yet some people think it's because big companies are doing well, or the economy is rebounding, or that there's just more average everyday people investing. When in reality, it's because the United States government and the Federal Reserve have been knowingly devaluing their own currency for the past 13 years just so that we didn't have to experience a market correction. That's why stock prices have been going up. It's not because of stimulus checks, not because of tax policies, not because of day traders. It is because we are witnessing the erosion of the US dollar in a similar way to what we have seen in Zimbabwe. So what does this mean? Well, some say that we are living in an everything bubble. I mean, stocks are at an all time high, real estate is too, trading cards, NFTs, Bitcoin, everything you can think of is at an all time high right now. That is why, again, some are saying we are in the bubble of all bubbles, where if this bubble were to burst, then it would not just take down the financial sector, but it could take down everything. 
Now there are some caveats and a silver lining to this. One is that people, well, like myself, have thought that we've been in an everything bubble for the better part of the last few years. And as of yet, the bubble has yet to burst, and it might not anytime soon. In fact, a lot of economists are saying that the US will keep devaluing its own currency for the better part of the next decade, meaning that stocks and investments might actually keep going up for the next decade or so. And that is a legitimate optimistic view. But historically speaking, overprinting currency for extended periods of time has always led to not only economic collapses, but usually the fall of entire countries and empires. Now, another take on this is that once businesses and people are fully back to work, we could theoretically experience a productivity boom as a result of increased things like automation, meaning that our economy could actually outgrow the money printers for the next decade, and we might be able to raise interest rates and stop printing money sooner than we think. But if that does not happen, we could be witnessing the erosion of the dollar as the world's reserve currency, and who knows, maybe if this continues, countries like China or even Japan that have publicly acknowledged that there is an everything bubble right now and have taken steps to stabilize their own currency maybe one of them will become the reserve currency of the world and replace the United States as the one true economic superpower. Or lastly, maybe we don't need government-based currency at all. Other investors believe that this devaluing of the US dollar might actually be the perfect storm for having a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin become the reserve currency of the world. Now there are a lot of issues with that, but that is actually a video that I have on my second channel. And my second channel is more of a parody and comical take on economics, finance, and business. So please check that out, as I should have another couple videos out there within the next week or so. The link is in the description below. And remember to please subscribe and hit that notification bell, as I actually just found out that over 90% of the people that watch my videos aren't subscribers. So please do that. And feel free to click on my documentaries playlist as I have a ton of other videos just like this on there. So make sure to click on my next video and I will see you guys there in just a few seconds.